Hi, my name is Matt and I'm an art historian. And just like most of you, I'm in lockdown. So I decided that I'd make a short film about a painting that I love. I've made this film with my daughter, Coco, who's done all the directing and all the editing. She's amazing. <laughs> We've had a fun, a fun time making this film. I hope you enjoy it as much as we have. Today, we're going to be looking at a painting by the Dutch artist, Johannes Vermeer, who specialised in domestic interior scenes. This painting, a young woman standing at a virginal, is in the collection of the National Gallery in London. Only about 36 of his paintings survive. We don't know how many he painted, but it is estimated that he may only have painted two or three works a year. A young lady is standing next to a musical instrument and looking out of the painting at us. Light screams into the room through the window on the left. Sunlight plays over the yellow silk of her skirt and the elaborate blue velvet of her mantle. The painting of the effects of light is truly masterful and is one of the great strengths of Vermeer's style. Although her fascination with light was hardly unprecedented, few painters focus so exclusively upon its properties for their own sake rather than for their usefulness to dramatic effect. She is standing next to an instrument called a virginal, which was similar to a harpsichord or a piano. A very similar instrument can be seen in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. The lid of the virginal has a mountainous landscape painted on it, which is based on a painting by a contemporary of Vermeer's, Peter Grinnewegel, which is now in The Hague. It is very possible that Vermeer owned this painting. On the wall behind the lady are two paintings. Nearest the window is another rugged landscape, which is very likely to be based on the same painting by Grunewagen. However, the largest painting, and the one that seems to me to attract the viewer's attention, is a painting of Cupid. We know it's Cupid because of his wings and the bow he holds in one hand. In the other hand, he is holding up a playing card, but we cannot see which card it is. The floor is tiled with black and white tiles, and along the bottom of the wall are blue and white delf tiles. These appear in some of his other paintings, perhaps most notably in his painting of a milkmaid, which is in the Rijksmuseum. Vermeer lived in the house of his mother-in-law and stayed there until his death in 1675. An inventory compiled after his death indicates that he painted all of his paintings in a room on an upper floor. The inventory recorded a painting of a cupid, which may have been this one. So we know that the painting we are seeing includes items that Vermeer may have owned. Although the room is real, in the sense that it existed and served as his studio, it is better to think of it like a stage set, which Vermeer changed for successive works, using items in his possession to achieve the desired effects. The meaning of the painting may at first seem obvious. The lady is waiting at her virginal for someone, perhaps a male admirer. However, the more I look at this painting, the less sure I become about what is going on, and it is this mystery that fascinates me. The lady is standing at her instrument, hands on the keys. However, the virginal was played sitting down, do we see the lady at the moment when she has just stood up to greet the person she is waiting for? Is she actually playing the instrument? Has she been interrupted as she is playing? Or is she about to begin playing once she is joined by her partner? There is a chair in the foreground of the painting. However, it is too far from the instrument for the lady to sit in while she is playing. Is it waiting for her partner? In the Netherlands at this time, musical instruments were frequently included in paintings of interiors and were often intended to represent love. As Shakespeare puts it, if music be the food of love, play on. However, music and music making could have another connotation, as it offered the opportunity for young people to meet and might form the backdrop to more physical displays of love. Is the lady, therefore, waiting for a suitor or a lover? A clue to unlocking what is going on may be in the painting of Cupid behind the lady. It can be no coincidence that the painted Cupid's foot seems to touch the lady's head. I always think that it looks a little like a cartoon speech bubble. Is the lady thinking of love? This image of Cupid is derived from a book of emblems by the artist Otto van Veen. Van Veen, an early teacher of Rubens, included Cupid in his emblem book, inscribed only one and with a motto, a lover ought to love only one, a stream dispersed in parts, the force thereof is diminished. The card that Cupid is holding may therefore be meant to be an ace, or a number one, indicating there is only one true love. Van Veen's book was sufficiently well known that contemporaries of Vermeer might well have been expected to understand the significance of the painting. So we might think that the lady is waiting for her love, her true love, and she is thinking of him as a chaste lover rather than in a carnal way. However, it has been suggested that the two landscapes also hold a key to understanding the lady's intentions. The landscape on the wall has been interpreted as a rocky, potentially dangerous scene and the landscape on the lid of the virginal has been read as calm and safe. 
does the lady have a choice to make? A choice which could have either a safe or tumultuous outcome. Are her choices between sacred and profane love? And how does she know when he is arriving? And why is his arrival so special? The lady is extremely well dressed. Indeed, her pearl necklace might have cost more than the price of the painting itself, and also possibly appears in other paintings by Vermeer. She is not, therefore, going about her daily business, but is dressed especially for the person for whom she is waiting. Perhaps her look of faint surprise is not genuine, as she'd been expecting to be interrupted. Perhaps we, the viewers, are not intended to know the full narrative of the painting. It is the lack of knowing that makes this a great work of art. In the areas of uncertainty, we can enter into the painting and provide our own interpretations. It is the enigmatic nature of the work, the certainty that there is more than meets the eye that fascinates and entrances me. Do go and see this painting when you have the opportunity. You won't be disappointed.